morning. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here. Um, this session will be about the TCFD, the Task Force uh, on Climate-Related Financial Disclosures. Uh, it's been cited repeatedly yesterday as one of the key tools for sustainable finance, uh, but it's also been cited repeatedly in various policy and intergovernmental processes since the recommendations were launched uh, a year ago. We do have a fantastic uh, panel uh, with us. We do have Jane Ambassador who will moderate the panel. She's a global head of sustainability at BNP Paribas Asset Management. We have uh, Christine Halverson, who is the director of Cicero and the former finance minister of Norway. We have Ernst Rau from Munich Re. He is the chief geo and climate scientist there. We have Martin Beermans from Rabobank, and he heads up the sustainable markets division. And we have also Richard Cantor, the chief risk officer at Moody's. Before we, I give the floor to the panel, I'd like to provide a few perspectives uh, from the UNIPFI Secretariat. I've had uh, the pleasure at times, not always, but often uh, to be uh, focusing a lot of my time over the last 18 months on this topic. The need for climate-related transparency is not new. State and non-state organizations have worked on this topic and this challenge for long, including through pioneering efforts like the CDP, the Carbon Disclosure Project, the Global Reporting Initiative, and on the regulatory side, the well-known Article 173 here in France within the Energy Transition Law. The TCFD, though, opens a new chapter. A new chapter not only in terms of how organizations shall disclose, meaning not only in terms of the technical approaches, the logics, the methodological underpinnings of disclosures, the key contribution of the TCFD is more political, is that it politically elevates the climate challenge to where it belongs, to where it needs to be, which is in the active, let's say, consciousness of decision makers in financial markets, in the real economy, CEOs, CFOs, CCOs, the entire chief alphabet. It elevates climate challenge onto the boardroom table and into the inner workings, I think this is key, of the clockwork of the machinery through which financial institutions and others estimate value, assess risk, and inform capital allocation. Now, in more technical, slightly more mundane terms, climate disclosure practice up until the TCFD featured two fundamental problems or two fundamental flaws. First, it was static at best and backward looking at worst. And second, we need to be honest here, it was by and large not really done too much and too in depth by institutions in the financial economy, investors and other financial institutions. Now the problem with disclosures being static is that the climate isn't. That's why we call it climate change. And that's why having organizations disclose on their climate risk based on today's carbon price or on today's probability of extreme weather isn't particularly insightful. We consider as UNEPFI one of the key innovations in the TCFD how it emphasizes that disclosures need to be forward-looking, scenario-based, and especially based on scenarios that are credible and authoritative. The TCFD also achieves to turn investors and financial institutions not only or from consumers of climate-related disclosures to issuers and preparers of such disclosures themselves. That makes sense. Climate risk becomes a threat to financial stability when it accumulates to a dangerous level, and it accumulates to dangerous levels in the books and on the portfolios of financial institutions, and that's why it's absolutely required that disclosures happen at that level. UNEPFI, you see, we're big fans of the TCFD. It's not difficult to like or endorse it, but it's pretty difficult to adopt and implement it, especially if you're a financial institution. Carrying out risk and opportunity assessments at the level of portfolios, across asset classes, across sector and geography exposures, in forward-looking scenario-based based ways, and both on the, the, the carbon-related risks as well as the physical climate risks is not trivial. 
That's why as UNEPFI over the last 18 months, we decided to create, as Eric pointed out, coalitions of the willing, pilot groups of FIs from within our membership, determined to jointly lead in cracking that TCFD adoption nut. 16 banks started and have delivered already um, two sets of groundbreaking methodologies early in the year. 20 investors followed and will deliver the results of their work in March or April of 2019. And just two weeks ago, we announced the creation of a group of insurers aiming to do the same thing, representing more than 10% in global insurance premium, um, to, to do this on the liability side of their business. We're grateful to the now 53 financial institutions. I think there's a slide that perhaps we can put up. These are the 53 financial institutions from within the ranks of UNEPFI who are working on TCFD adoption in a very hands, in a very sleeves up way, in a very proactive way. We're also grateful to the experts that, were, that masterminded the methodologies at hand, the teams at Acclimatize, at Oliver Wyman and at Carbon Delta, who work together with, the, with these groups and are working together with these groups in implementing. But all of this is just the first step. 40 banks are now being trained through UNEPFI's online course on climate risk and opportunity, and future iterations will allow for more participation. And we're likely going to announce a second phase of this work for FIs to tackle the barriers that persist, modeling-wise, data-wise, scenario-wise. Let me conclude before I hand over to, to Kristin uh, for a scientific background of where we stand by saying that we must also, by all means, recognize the limitations of this framework. The TCFD is meant to help FIs and other organizations improve their management of risk and opportunity, and that's a must because that is the core of what financial institutions are meant to do. The next challenge is that FIs understand the extent to which they are contributing to a world that's below, well below two degrees through financing, governance, and cost of capital dynamics, and the extent also to which they're inhibiting progress towards a well below two degrees world. As UNEPFI, we invite all FIs and stakeholders to help us build that dual agenda of climate action in the finance sector. And with that said, I will disappear from the stage now and I'll give the floor to Christine for a scientific backdrop on where we stand now in terms of climate, the risks and opportunities. Christine? <laughs> 